Now, could you tell me something about the context of this study of eribulin with uh, sarcoma? First of all, uh, sarcoma, what are the challenges there? What, what were you trying to do? So, what, what were the investigators trying to do? Yeah, so sarcoma is a rare cancer. Uh, when we usually speak about cancer, we talk about carcinomas, which are organ cancers. Sarcomas are the connective tissue cancers. In the United States, we'll see about 14,000 connective tissue cancers a year, making it really an orphan disease. Uh, the complexity of sarcoma, in fact, is that there are 50 different subtypes of sarcoma. You can imagine every soft tissue element of the body can develop into a cancer, believe it or not. Uh, the ones that are focused in this particular um, abstract, and that will be presented today at ASCO, are two uh, subtypes of sarcoma. One is myomyosarcoma, which are cancers of the muscle, and the other is called uh, adipocyte tumors. And that has to be uh, a little bit clarified. This is, uh, we also call these liposarcomas, which are cancers of the fat. And actually, people are always surprised that fat can, can become malignant. And yes, you can get malignancies of the fat called liposarcomas, of which, in fact, there are several types of those as well. So, so that, that's the complexity of the sarcoma field. To be a sarcoma doctor, in fact, you have to have a special, you have to know just not one cancer, sarcoma, you have to know about 50 different cancers to be a sarcoma specialist. Could you first of all uh, run me through what's your take on what Dr. Shevsky actually discovered and the, and the main right, point right. Of, of this study? So it was a randomized clinical trial of this drug called Arubilin uh, by Asai Pharmaceuticals, which targets, they say, the microtubule. That's part of the, we call the spindle of the, of the can dividing cancer cell. We're not really sure exactly how the drug works in sarcoma, but that's the putative target for the drug. And they compared it to a very old drug called the carbazine or DTIC, which has been around for about 20, 25 years. That drug does have some activity in one of those two sarcoma subtypes, the, the lyomyosarcoma. In fact, the carbazine works, I would say, in about 10% of those patients, but has never really been tested in the, in, the, in the liposarcoma setting, but it was used as the control arm of this randomized clinical trial. So what's your take on the findings? Because it was a good number of patients. Remarkable considering that this is, these are rare cancers, uh, with 400 patients and also you had a two-month extension in life. We have to put this in perspective. Um, we give a lot of chemotherapy for sarcoma. The, the standard drug uh, chemotherapy involves usually two drugs. One is called doxorubicin or called adromycin. And then another drug called ifosamide um, or, or ifex. And we give that with a, a drug called mesna, which protects the bladder from the side effects of the chemotherapy. The regimen is called the AIM regimen, A-I-M. We like mnemonics in oncology, so AIM is a drug therapy. So if you give that drug, there have been a number of major randomized clinical trials comparing AIM, AIM, to just A, a by itself, uh, adromycin. Uh, in fact, a European trial just published in the last year and a half in Lancet Oncology, huge study, large numbers of patients. And guess what? Despite the toxicity of AIM, no survival benefit over adromycin by itself. And so the question is, do we have drugs that actually make people live longer in sarcoma? And up to now, in fact, there's never been a major randomized clinical trial like the one we have with the Rublin versus carbazine that's ever shown that patients live longer with a chemotherapy drug in sarcoma. And that's what makes this study so special, a drug that makes people live longer. Now, not a lot longer. Not a lot longer, two months, you know, that's not a lot of time. But in the field of sarcoma, that actually is considered a major advance because never in the history of oncology have we had a drug that shows a patient live, lives along with chemotherapy. The chemotherapy can palliate, it can make people feel better, but then again, you have very toxic drugs and how to, how to balance palliation versus, you know, toxicity to chemotherapy. But here we have a drug that really shows a survival benefit for the first time in a rare cancer sarcoma. Right, so what do you think busy cancer doctors or perhaps uh, the ones who occasionally see these sarcomas should be doing about this or can do or might change their practice? It'll change practice. I mean, clearly the, 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 for patients who fail the standard chemotherapy, the standard chemotherapy is still the adromycin ifosamide drug therapy. In fact, the drug is only, was only tested in patients who failed the standard, even though those standards never prolong survival. That's still the standard chemotherapy for first and second line treatment for patients with metastatic soft tissue tumors or connective tissue cancers. So for patients who fail the standard chemotherapies, these more toxic drugs, there now is a rublin for patients who fail that. We do not know whether it should be used earlier in the treatment of the disease. Should it be used instead of those drugs? That data was, well, we don't know. Those will be future clinical trials. But clearly for people looking for a second line therapy, those who fail a first line treatment, a rublin is now a major indication for at least two sarcomas. And we have to be very specific about that. This study was only for lyomyo, 
and adipocyte or liposarcomas. There are 48 other sarcoma subtypes not included in this trial. We don't know if the drug works effectively in those. But for those two subtypes, which are the, probably the two most common sarcomas, liposarcoma and leiomyosarcoma, this drug clearly shows an indication for people who fail a first-line uh, indication, a first-line therapy. So if you were to sum up in 10 or 15 seconds the take-home message coming out of this for doctors, what is that? I would think, I would put it in, the, there's a, Neil Armstrong said a famous statement when he landed on the moon, and I'll modify it for, for patients who treat sarcoma. A small step for cancer, but a giant step for sarcoma. And do you see light at the end of the tunnel for other sarcomas? Well, I, there's no reason to think this shouldn't work in all the other sarcomas as well, but we still need that data in clinical trials to prove that point. And I think we're, at least we have a, a small step in the right direction. I, I do see light. I have had no light up to now. So to have something that actually makes people live longer, of course, that's light. That's a step in the right direction. Now we, now we know to move at least in the direction of the light.